one of the most frustrating feelings can be when you feel like you've proven yourself to somebody and this is whether it's personal or on a professional level you feel like you've proven yourself to somebody you feel like you've shown them like hey i am good enough to get the job done i am the man or woman for the job and they still go in another direction they still choose somebody else they replace you for something that you showed them you're capable of it's annoying it's tough it, it, it just can make you so angry and I'm speaking from personal experience but I wonder if that's the same experience that Tylen Wallace is going through right now reason I say this is because shortly after it was announced that the Baltimore Ravens were going to be bringing in Deontay Hardy on a one-year deal Tylen Wallace had a very interesting and timely retweet his retweet was from a tweet of his own from December 10th of 2023 and what was that tweet well it said got to be more careful and got to be more careful like baltimore careful a nice little incorporation of baltimore in there. but anyway got to be more careful but what was included in that tweet well it was footage of his infamous punt return against the la rams his game winning punt return against the la rams it was different angles of it and it was also the baltimore Ravens celebration in the locker room of that punt return and we remember that punt return it was special and i really thought that with that punt return and so many other things that was going on that last season with the baltimore ravens that oh my goodness we got it this year it's all year but anyway talk about that another day or maybe we won't but anyway tyler, tyler wallace he retweeted that shortly after the deontay hardy announcement and i said "Ooh, that's something right there very interesting but i get it i get it because he showed us last year just last year the end of last season like hey i, I could hold this down Devin do they got hurt tylen wallace didn't do punt returns before tylen wallace showed up and he showed out he did his thing he killed it he crushed it and, and, and he helped out so much and when you think about it like that could have possibly just been the beginning of his role as a punt returner you think about if he has a full off season working with the special teams working to improve his craft that he obviously he got some skills at because he showed us he could have been even better he could have been even more explosive he could have been our guy but the baltimore ravens said no we are going to go in a different direction and i'm not mad at the baltimore ravens for doing that at all uh competition brings out the best in everybody and if it doesn't bring out the best in you then you are not you're not in the right business you're really not because if they are to bring in somebody and you if you ended up pouting if you were somebody that ended up pouting if they brought in somebody else that ain't gonna help you out at all but if they bring in somebody else and you like oh y'all want to bring in somebody else let me show y'all why that was a waste of money let me show y'all why that was a waste of a contract let me show y'all why that was a waste of time then hey you're going to have your opportunities. Well, and it may not be with the current team you with, but you're going to get your opportunity somewhere eventually. But um, with Tylen Wallace, uh, this is big for him. In a lot of ways, this is a lot of competition for him in a few different ways. And something that I, don't even, I didn't even think about until uh, a little bit ago, while Deontay Hardy is expected to be the Baltimore Ravens return specialist, punt return specialist kick return specialist so he would be taking that role away from tylen wallace even though it was devin duvernay's and tylen wallace was just filling in but he filled in in a major way while that role is going to be expected i can't say it's going to be it's expected that it goes to him it ain't over till it's over tylen wallace could still show out in training camp and stuff and be like hey i'm holding this that i got this is mine to lose and i ain't losing it he can go do that but at the same time the competition with Tylen Wallace and Deontay Hardy, it's not only at punt return and kick return. It's not only at return duties. It's also at wide receiver. He could possibly take away snaps. Now, there, there are not many snaps currently for Tylen Wallace right now. We don't know what the future holds, of course. But based off of recent history and based off of even the Ravens wide receiver room right now, it wouldn't be many opportunities for him now, and they just added another wide receiver. And I would expect them to, and I think a lot of y'all expect them to as well, to still add even more to that wide receiver 
room. The depth chart right now at wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens is Zay Flowers. He's obviously going to have a huge role with the Ravens. It's Rashad Bateman. He's going to have a significant role with the Baltimore Ravens. It's Nelson Aguilar. He may not have the significant role, but he will be a contributor. And then it's Deontay Hardy and Tylen Wallace. Not in any particular order with the last two, but that's the Ravens depth chart right now. So you think, like, with the Baltimore Ravens offense, how many targets are there to go around? And then, like we just talked about a couple of minutes ago, I still expect them to add a wide receiver of significance, whether they draft one early in the first or second, possibly third round, or if they bring in a veteran via free agency or via trade, then I, I, I expect the Baltimore Ravens to still add at least two more, one vet and one rookie. But we'll see what happens. That would take away snaps from Tylen Wallace. And, and anybody that they bring in, or most people that they bring in, especially if it's a top pick or if it's a veteran, that would push Tylen Wallace and Deontay Hardy down on the depth chart. But let's think about opportunities. Even before the Baltimore Ravens even add anybody, let's think about the opportunity right now. How would that look for a Tylen Wallace, a Deontay Hardy, and th those two in competition with each other? Well, you got Zay Flowers. He is going to get plenty of targets, plenty of touches. You got Mark Andrews. He is expected to get plenty of targets and touches. Uh, you have Rashad Bateman. I would expect right now his role to increase. You got Nelson Aguilar. He'll be a contributor. You got Isaiah Likely. And I hope that it's likely that the Baltimore Ravens figure out a way for him and Mark Andrews to both be involved at the same time. It, it, it's time. It, it's time. But then, so that, that's only the pass catchers. And that's not even considering running backs catching passes out of the backfield, too. That's, that's only the pass catchers for now. But then you got the Baltimore Ravens running game. You just signed free agent Derrick Henry. You still got Justice Hill. Keaton Mitchell probably going to be out for now. We'll see when he gets back. But then there's the draft or whether they bring somebody in via free agency or undrafted rookie free agent. We'll see. But. You got the Baltimore Ravens running game. And that's just the running backs. You still got Lamar Jackson that he is going to take off at times as well. So all that, with all that being said, you got all those guys that are expected to get the majority of the touches. And then there's Tylen Wallace. And then there's Deontay Hardy. It's only so many touches to go around. And just to really refresh your minds, remember last year. Last year, we had Zay Flowers, we had Odell Beckham Jr., had Rashad Bateman, had Mark Andrews, had Isaiah Likely, had Nelson Aguilar. That's six right there. And then with the running game, temporarily you had J.K. Dobbins, but you had Gus Edwards, you had Keaton Mitchell, you had Justice Hill, then you had Lamar Jackson, too. You had all of that. That was before Devin DuVernay. Devin DuVernay was a starting kick and punt returner. He was a starting return man. And this dude used to be the jet sweep king. All them jet sweeps that used to always be Devin DuVernay. Last year, that all changed. Devin DuVernay was not very involved with the offense. All them jet sweeps that he used to get, they all went to Zay Flowers. The majority of them did. All the catches he used to get, probably went to Bateman and Nelson Aguilar. He took them. Devin DuVernay was just not involved like that. So... It's, it would be hard for me to expect, whether it be Deontay Hardy, whether it be Tylen Wallace, it would be hard for me to expect either one of those two to be significantly involved in the offense. Now, anything is possible till it ain't possible no more, but when you look at it realistically, it is so much in front of them that it's going to be hard to get them touches like that. So that's why with the Baltimore Ravens bringing in Deontay Hardy, it makes it even tougher for Tylen Wallace, not only to get his touches, but when you think about it, the possibility, it could even be tough for him to make the roster, especially if they bring in more at wide receiver, especially if they bring in a veteran or an early draft pick at the wide receiver position. So I know Tylen Wallace, I know he ain't just going to quit. He ain't going to give up. I know Tylen Wallace is going to go in there and fight. He's going to go in there and try to do everything in his power that he can. To win any job, to win a job at wide receiver, to win a job at returner, to do his thing. 
But this is what it's all about. John Harbaugh did say the other day in the Baltimore Ravens, uh, the Liars Luncheon, their pre-draft presser, he talked about how the best player is not always the best player. And again, it sounded cheesy a little bit when he said it at first, but it made sense how he explained it. He said the best player is the one who's playing the best at that particular moment. It's not always who we expect to be the best. It's not always who media may say is the best player. Da, da, da. It's who's playing best at that particular moment. So, now the Baltimore Ravens have an opportunity to see who their best punt returner will be, their best kick returner will be, and their best maybe fourth or fifth wide receiver for now will be. But what do y'all think is going to go down? Do you think that the job is Deontay Hardy's from jump? Because, I mean, the Ravens did sign him to a one-year deal to be their return man. Or do you think Tylen Wallace got a shot at keeping what he may feel is his let me know in the comment section i look forward to talking with y'all look forward to hearing from y'all as always make sure you subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on and run them likes all the way up